All right, guys. Good morning. Boker Tov and Barach. We are ready in the heart of the Hakdama of the Alter Rebbe's Hakdama for Shari Yichud Vayemona. On the page that you have in front of you, um, I would say two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven lines into the third paragraph, the paragraph that starts with the word Vihine. Seven lines into it, and just a quick recap for those that are that are just joining us now. And it has very much to do with today's piece that we're going to be doing has very much to do with the, what we spoke about yesterday's shear in Rav Charlap. There's a concept called activating love, activating fire, activating my passion, activating my excitement, as opposed to waiting for something to happen to me. Now, when it comes to the concept that we're speaking about literally in this piece, it's the concept of feeling love for Hashem. If I told you that it's something that needs to be activated, what would you think that says about the value of that kind of love? Cheaper. It's cheaper, right? It's, uh, why, why, does that, why does that give us a sense that it's cheap? It should be a uh, conscious response. It should be something that you have to consciously so it should be a subconscious response. Yeah. Not necessarily true. You're writing an album with really, really good music, and the first hit is great in the beginning, but the ones that you listen to more are really like really the best songs, and put a little more work in. You force yourself. No, no, not force yourself. You just need to connect more with it. You need to put a little more work in to really find the treasures. Oh, but wait a second. But you would think that if the music was that good, it would just come and punch me in the stomach. No? Okay, I'm not. Sa- You're right. That's that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to show. It doesn't work like that. But where in our where in the psyche do we think that it's supposed to work like that? Where does that come from? That that if it was really good, if it was if the music was really that good, I wouldn't have to work so hard. It would just hit me right away. What's that? Today's divorce rate tells us that. Right. Right. That's what you know. The whole world is Right. You fall out of love. You fall in, you fall out, it's this and right. Now, okay, that's very freaky because what does that say about the first, the Alter Rebbe began yesterday explaining to us, Shnei Minei Ahava, there are two types of love that a Yid feels for, for his Creator. The first type of love that he spoke about was the love that he said is, is really meant for who? Tzaddikim. What kind of love were we talking, speaking about with the Tzaddikim yesterday? Was that activated love? It just needs to be revealed. But it's not man-made. It's not created love. It's not la'asota. Remember, we're, we're focusing on the Alter Rebbe's question, how can you command to love? La'asota. And the, the commandment, ve'ahavta Hashem alakecha. So the first type of love we discussed yesterday by the Alter Rebbe was, the, was this Indian of, he says here, um, when the rational soul, when the divine soul that realizes how much it's not worth getting excited by anything that's so finite and so materialistic, then what happens? As I, then my nefesh just starts to naturally elevate and grab, go up, like naturally, like the sign of it, like the tzura of a real yid. But here, the Alter Rebbe is saying, and he ended off by saying, and that is for who? Simchul Tzadikim Ba'ashem. That was the love that he spoke about for Tzadikim. But today, we're going to be, and he said, and that's really just for them, but today we're going to be speaking about the, not that I'm chas v'shal, I'm not calling you all Tzadikim, but the Alter Rebbe is saying, but really for each and every one of us, it's something else. And by the way, just for those of you that I never learned Tanya before, and that have been more versed in the Kutei Maran, when the Alter Rebbe says the word Tzadik, and when Rabbi Nachman says the word tzaddik, it's two different ball games. Okay? If, you, if, you, if, so, if a Lubavitch Mashpia or Rabbi Yus really likes you, and he wants to give you a compliment, then on a really good day, Hershey, what will he call you? No, it's a bainani. No. A bainani. <laughs> on a really good, right? A, that's like on a really, really good day. And we'll, and we'll see when we, when we eventually go into the first part of the Tanya. A bainani is someone that doesn't do any Averas, it's just his relationship to Averas is different than, than, than that of a tzaddik, right? But here he says, whether you're a tzaddik, benani, and even a rasha, activating love 
it's a different ball game. So let me ask you all something that is, is something that maybe we, we, we don't really put that much emphasis on. When was the last time you could say that you were in a state of love, activated love for Hashem? That you felt that you loved God? I know it sounds very not Jewish, I love the Lord, right? But when was the last time that you felt absolute love for Hashem and it wasn't necessarily because He actually did something for you right away. And don't tell me right now, well, my child was born, I loved God. Earlier, before the summer, we were all doing the name of Hashem to Allah. We were yeah. being grateful and not being into that. I think, I think I definitely had moments like that where, where I mean, that grateful just led to, to, to this love. So, that's very good. The, the hoda'a, being thankful, activated a button. That button was called Ahava Labore, love for Hashem. Okay. Anyone else can remember the last time they felt that they could say they, they, they literally loved Hashem? It sometimes happens for a few seconds during the Eila. During? During the Eila. You have a pretty optimistic year. Once in a while, last for... 10, 20 seconds maximum. Yeah, and you'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to say, like, this isn't worth even tapping into because no, no, no. I'm going to, you know. It took a lot of work the last 20 seconds. Sometimes. And sometimes I, you know, sometimes I reach that during the year. Wow. I, I know we're learning <coughs> Chabad now, but I would definitely recommend you going to Uman for Rosh Hashanah. Because, um, you know, this, that helped, because there, there's this. It's a completely different avenue. I really, I really like, like people like to say it's the same. It's really like a different avenue of getting there. But this Indian of love, of the activation of love, is something that's felt much more than just you know 10, 20 seconds of. You know, I think you're being too hard on this. I think you actually do love Hashem much, or you feel the love uh, much more. That's my personal account. Because you learned so much Torah, there's no way. When you're, that, when you're that engrossed in Torah, there's no way that you can't really tap into it more than just 20 seconds during the Eila. But I hear what you're saying. Most of the, I think what you're feeling is something, I think you're describing like Yechida, like the highest level of the, of the soul's expression in the world, like we said yesterday. A, like absolute oneness, complete attachment that has no parallel to it during the year. I wish. Uh, I'm giving you, I'm commanding you to believe in yourself right now, Jim. I wish. So let's go back inside. You see the words, V'hashenit? V'hashenit? Yeah, V'hashenit. Is everyone inside the words? Yeah, V'hashenit. V'hashenit. Okay. V'hashenit. Now we're going to talk about the second type of love that the Altev is going to be speaking about for each and every one of us. Kenny, do you have a page? You got it. You see it inside? Vashenis? Vashenis yahava shekol adam yuchal agiyelea. But this second type of love, not like the first one, the second type of love is a love that each and each person can get to. When and how? Kshizbon and heitev be'um kadaliba. When a person contemplates deeply in the depths of his heart, of his heart, bidvarim ha-me'orerim et ahava la-Hashem, when a person stops and he contemplates deep into his heart on the things that arouse love to Hashem in the heart of every single Jew. He's under the assumption, and he's obviously the correct assumption, that within each of us there's a place that when we choose to look at that, the result of looking at that, meditating on that. Again, the Alter Rebbe's word, Lihit Bonen, really means to contemplate Right? When you go there that, to that place, the natural result will be, wow, I love you. Wow, I love you. Now can we, does that place exist towards another human being? Is there a place within each and every one of us that if we go to that zone and we contemplate on it, we could result by saying, I love you? Obviously, we could think about it right now to our wives. Is there a place like that, that I can go and meditate in that place? They really stopped and meditated on it. What do you think? It's harder. It's harder towards Hashem or towards your wife? No, I'm saying, I thought you were saying to anybody. 
to other people, okay. whatever is so not familiar with. Whether your family, I think that's that feels more like the first one that it's an uh, easier activation point. Uh-huh. We're talking primarily about appreciation. Um, primarily, no, I mean that's I the think you're right. to love somebody. And we obviously have a lot of reasons to love a show. Uh, wait, that's a good point. Is that the is that the real reason to love somebody? Because we appreciate them. Primarily. What do you guys think? Maybe a reaction to some appreciation. But in fact, we don't give. Right. To the receiving slash appreciation. So not dafka. Huh? So not dafka. What you're saying, right? Nachon. Yeah, Eli. Ani Hashem. Yeah. Right. 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 Appreciate what they, appreciate their existence, not necessarily, you know, what they give to you right. by the fact that they're present. Right. So the love is, the love has to be, has to result in an, in an, in an action. Well, it needs to result in a response. In a response. The, uh, right. Imagine, action. imagine like your wife comes and says to you, uh, you don't appreciate anything I do. I mean, you're saying, are you kidding me? Do you know what goes on in my heart? <laughs> do you know what I'm feeling in my heart? You wouldn't believe it. It doesn't look like it. Oh, listen, it's too deep for this world. It, it can't, you know, it, it, you're not, listen, the more that you can't see it, the greater it is. Because if I had to express it, it would minimize its greatness, right? <laughs> right? Okay, now think about that towards the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Okay? Wow, I feel... Hashem is Baruch. And Hashem is saying, okay, this chakra is... You want me to get out of bed and stop this feeling of appreciation? <laughs> if I start doing stuff, it'll take me out of appreciation mode, right? So obviously... Break the mood. Right. Obviously, that, that's not... That's a kappa. That's not what we're... That's not... Obviously, that's not the love or the resulting of love that we're speaking about over here. al Rebbe is saying there's a place in us that when you go there and you contemplate what our relationship with Hashem is all about it will immediately arouse love, but that love then has hem shefriyut. <coughs> then that love results in something as well. Let's look back inside. Again. Um, whether you meditate on this in a more general way, how? How, how would you activate it? Look. You say, Ki hu mamish. You realize that life itself is Hashem. Like, without Hashem, there is no life. Like, and then you'll say, what do you mean? There, there's a concept called atheism. And atheists don't believe, acknowledge God, and they're still alive. So how do we relate to that? They don't contemplate on the fact that God is actually their life, and yet they're still alive. But that's, you know, the world is full of creatures that don't, acknowledge God, appreciate God, or understand God, and they're still alive. Correct. That doesn't depend on that. <coughs> That's exactly it. What does it depend on? Because Adam ohevet nafsho v'chayav ken yohav et Hashem. So when a person looks and he sees, I have life, I have a soul, he relates the concept, the existence of his life and his soul to the existence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ken Yohav et Hashem, Kasher Yid Bonen Veyasim Elibo, Ki Hashem Hunafsho Amitit Vechayav Mamish. So the more he looks at life and he sees, well, look at every single thing that I have, and Bichla, look at my existence. Look at the fact that I'm alive, look at the fact that I have a soul. The more that I'm aware that I'm alive and I have anything to do with existence, that will lead a person more, not just to acknowledging Hashem, but to loving Hashem. There's a big difference between the two. I can acknowledge Hashem, and I can call Him out on being the one that made my life miserable. Or I can just look at the fact of life itself on its own, 
without labeling it and judging it and categorizing it and realize there's wow this is this is this is God this is the Ribbonish Lailam and that arouses more and more love within me just by the fact that I look at life itself what does that mean that you look at the fact that he gave you life yes okay that's appreciation and that he right? is life and that's appreciation that's yes. appreciation yes okay yeah yeah. Very good. No, no, we're, we're still there. Like in the Zohar, the Zohar explains this. When it says, Nafshi, I realize you, Hashem, you are my nefesh, you are my soul. I want you. This is what I, I want, that which is giving me life. That was in a more general way. Now that's a very, uh, I'll be very honest. Um, uh, it's, uh, if I, I have a hard time connecting to this general way of, of, of meditating on, on life itself. It's too broad for me. I have to work on this very strongly. Because this is a very big, like, I don't even know where to, I can get lost very easily when I sit back and I contemplate this concept of life, everything I have. That's you, Hashem. You need a lot of really strong, disciplined uh, patience in order to get to this meditative space. And let, am I the only one that has that issue? Or? That takes a lot of work. Big time, yeah, Yehuda. Isn't so just saying you should be like more aware, basically, like in general? The awareness, real awareness, will, will lead to Ahava, yes. Yes, Gener meaning generally, yes. General awareness will lead to love, okay? Okay, I mean, you're saying that it can take like a, a lot of strong focus, but could it also come about in a way of many minor focuses, like you're in a rush and you get a green light and it's just like, wow, but if we're talking on a level of appreciation, that leading to something, or, you know, you have the grocery store and then the kupa opens and it's just boom, or whatever, all those little things. We're not talking about no. thank Hashem for bad things necessarily at this point, but, right. you know, talking about life as a whole, then it's, yes, it's family, it's Renaissance, it's all the big stuff, it could also be little stuff. You're probably right. That the more awareness of the minor stuff will might lead you to the bigger picture. Yeah. And then you get the big stuff. I don't think it's right. just the. I don't right. think it sounds to me like it's not just the stuff to feel grateful for. <clears throat> it's the stuff to like, wow, look at how beautiful that tree is. Yeah, but then, but then you're grateful for that beauty. Yeah. Well, you're grateful for the kupa line also. Right. We're living in in, in the space of appreciation. No, if you're grateful right. for the tree, you're like you know. Awe of, the, of Hashem's creation. Yeah, but awe doesn't necessarily lead to love. I mean, you can be amazed at somebody's talent and not love them. You know, I'm That's in awe of what's true. an ethic to do, but I have absolutely zero. Well, people love people get confused with that, and when they become, when they when they when they make their musicians into avodazara. Yeah, yeah, very much. Mamish. Yeah. Can you can you share your story? <laughs> Another time. Well, I'll share it. I mean, <laughs> this no, this, that's how it works. I'm a coin. So, so he was on tour, and his band was like killing it, right? And some guy named Boston was that his name? <laughs> some guy. They were on. They were on tour somewhere, and some guy. He said his name was Boston. I don't know. She, she be I don't know. Right. So he came up to him and and yeah, yeah I'm sure that's what his parents gave him, right? Boston. And he, but he came up to you and he he started saying, "You guys are like you're better than fish." Or, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he started making so much out of him and basically, Yakir kind of took the guy and shook him and said, in other words, "Get a life," you know, to shake. But but but. That's not true. Right. That's not true. Or. Who cares? Yeah. Like, that's really the dear part of it. What are you, what are you making out of this, right? What are you making out of the? I don't think that that kind of awe leads to love. I think it makes it into, into worship, into false worship. I don't think that there's really love towards musicians. I love you. Like you ever see those videos of Michael Jackson in the 80s or in the 90s when he would, he'd come out to the, to the stadium and all these g girls started, would just start f to faint. It happened with the Beatles too, and they right? Yeah, with Elvis. Too. Yeah, with Elvis. What, with it, what is that? Trouble. But what is that? Is that love? Excitement. But 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 is it? Does it arouse love? Can you say that that's love? Because I appreciate it arouses them, but that's not the. It doesn't. It doesn't lead. It's not love. Uh, it's the society calls love. Like everyone says, oh, I love Michael Jackson or I love right. the Beatles, but I didn't have any connection to it really. Right. 
So our union is, is that, you know, hoping to attach ourselves to that which we're in awe of, to that which we appreciate. This is what the Alter Rebbe is saying. This kind of love that we're speaking about, love deal, is being in awe, being appreciative to it, but then attaching ourselves to that which, oh my God, we could attach ourselves to this? You see, if these, the Havdil Elif Afli Havdalas, right? If these teeny boppers, when they get so excited, then they were told, you could attach yourself to this, right? That love would fade. The more time they'd spend with that person, the love would fade away. But the Havdil with the Ribbon Shleilam, the more time we actually activate that love and spend it with Ribbon Shleilam, the more that love only grows, and the more that the love I thought I had it seems it gets smaller and smaller, the more that I get closer and more attached. Um, it's interesting, because one is, they have no plan, right? Like, right. Not, like, the Romanian girls are, they have no plan for action. Right. Like you said, they would realize they were more shallow. Us, the opposite, we thought, we have like a topless plan how to get close, and the more we know, the deeper we understand, yeah. how, like, deeper love can be, and the more we talk about it. So this is one level of activating the love, is that I see, like, wow, this is so big, my life, is from, is from Him, He is my life. Yerbanu Shalim, you are my life itself. You are my, that, those words even, you are my life itself. Because we, we're such a, you know, we get so much caught up in halacha to define our relationship with Hashem, it's so important to sometimes stop and just say, Yerbanu Shalim, nafshi ivisicha, you, you are my life itself. Just repeating that over and over again. You are my life itself. That's the first way of contemplation and meditating on this. That's derech klau. Next words. Vehein derech prat. Now in a more direct way. Sheyavin v'yaskil b'gdulato shel melech malche hamlachim ha-kadosh baruch hu derech pratit. When a person understands and he gets a little bit more of a taste of how great the Ribbon HaShleilam is, meaning when he attributes everything in this world to Hashem, everything. And obviously when you go into nature, like I'm sure, Toby, when you were out there right now, even though it's not Eretz Yisrael, but it's still Marabu Ma'asech HaShem, the more you see these just glamorous, incre- like, where were you in, the, the last place you were in? Yellowstone. In Yellowstone. Like, and you attribute this greatness, this gedula, to Hashem. More and more, the greatness of anything in this world is to Hashem. You see Talmud Chachamim, you see Tzadikim, you see that what makes them what they are is because they're attached to the Ribbon Shalom. That's it. And their greatness is all a totzah of clinging more and more to the Ribbon Shalom. Like I saw someone yes, last night, a big Tzadik, go to Rav Steinman, who lives in a cubicle. Do you know how big his, his apartment is in Bnei Brak? It's, is he, you think he's in Bnei Brak? It's his apartment, the, 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 the gone. I Rav Steinman, I think his apartment is, is like a, 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 a fifth of just this area, like this side of the room. And But you see that this person's great, he doesn't attribute a thing to himself. That makes you more and more in awe and wonder, like amazed about how great and how large Hashem is, the more you look into that, kasher yuchal se'it b'sichlo, to the capacity that you're able to carry this in your mind, umashelemala b'sichlo, and you also know, whatever I know now, it's so much bigger. Like how do you know you really get to know Hashem? That you realize that as great as what you think you've got to right now is nothing compared to Bezrat Hashem what you're going to feel tomorrow and what is in front of you that would be like that's like the awesomeness of love with you know with, with when you get married you think you love right then you have your first child then you, you thought you look at the love of the marriage you're like like you start laughing at your wedding pictures right you look at each other with those eyes and you think <laughs> come on what, what were we thinking but that's how it is with Hashem too hopefully you can look at yourself when you're 19 and be like wow I thought then when I was striking that, that was, that's what it meant to be close to Hashem. Now what's the problem with many of us? Is that we're in our mid-30s, early 40s, and we only look back and be like, oh, when I was then, when I was in yeshiva, that's when I felt close to the Yvonne Can you imagine if that's how you looked at your marriage? 
It's like you've grown, you have children, you have a family and a house, but you're still looking back at those very starry immature, eyes. Eyes, starry eyes of, wow, I, I wish it could be like that. Like some guy came up to me recently, and a person in his early 40s had a spiritual experience, had to do with something here. And he said to me, my guy has a, ton, a lot of children, this night. he said to me, wow, I haven't felt like this since my Shana Aleph in Yeshiva. And he thought he was telling me something nice. And it broke my heart. It broke my heart. You hear what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I yeah. That's where I had my uncle Rick Cook. And he had just come back from Safari. And he stopped in the middle and he said, you know, when I was in Safari, I was in such awe of Kadosh Baruch Hu. Like, you can see, like, the food chain, like, right in front of you. I can't remember what piece we were learning. I think it was Orosa uh, Rick. Yeah, right? Borot? Yeah. yeah. And he uh, said, why can't I just feel that way looking at mankind? Yeah. Why do I have to go to South Africa to feel that way? Well, the real tzaddikim are looking at you right now as if they're in front of the Grand Canyon. In terms of their amazement of Marabu Masech Hashem. So, can we just um, like take a clear example of the, the difference between their cloud and their Prat. Like in a, in a real world example. Soon. We have to finish what Derek Prat is. Good thing. Let's do that. Let's first finish what Derek Prat is. So after what? After you have this glimpse of how much bigger the picture is, and it's all Hashem. And then you see this mighty, massive, infinite Hashem has a shayachut to me, to us. I'm part of the people that he mamish came and intervened in our lives in such a direct and intimate way. <laughs> that he came down to the erva, to, how do you say erva? The, in, the, in the context here, the... What does he say? The obscenity of the earth. The obscenity of the earth. The darkest... Again, you should know, like what was happening in Egypt... <laughs> That was, it's the, it was the darkest culture that ever existed. And we, were, and we were in it. And Hashem comes and takes us. He comes down to there and intervenes with us in such a personal way. To take our neshamas out of the iron... Uh, yeah. Like the kur, the... Uh, well, crucible is the... Uh, yeah, but what does that mean in English? <laughs> yeah, the fiery, yeah. He comes down to there to take us out of there. Shehu sitra achra, Rahman al-Islam, which is mamish, the exact other side of all that represents love, beauty, and holiness. Le korveinu elav, to bring him, to bring us close to him. Ule davkeinu bishmo mamish, and to make, and to cling us to his name, mamish. Ushmo echad, and he brings us to the pl- from a place like we say every 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 day in in, uh, in davening, mashpil game ade aretz magbia shvalim ade marom, magbia shvalim. We say this every morning in shachras. It's great to know. Again, it's very nice when sometimes we understand what we're saying in davening. It's recommended. It's a beautiful thing when we know what we're saying. Magbiya shvalim adei marom. You lift up those who are so shafel, low and humiliated, adei marom, up into the marom, up into the skies. This is the derech prat. When I look into my life, I say, okay, I was part of a people that that happened to. I'm part of that people. So just to think about that, the world is so massive. That did not happen to any other people, ever, nor will it. That never happened to any other group of people, just to us. So that I could say, wow, lucky them. No, lucky, lucky you that you're part of the shaykhs to that, to that people. What a, what a wondrous thing. It, nev- it never happened to anybody else. There's a lot of appreciation in that. When does, you know, how do you separate the appreciation from the love? Why should you? 
All right, that's a good question. But yeah. you know, we're talking about you know, love as opposed to appreciation. He says, this brings you, all these, this contemplation brings you, it arouses, this activation arouses such a, such a, it's not even appreciation anymore. It's beyond, it's, you can't say, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you took me out of Egypt. That, that, that doesn't work, right? Well, let's say you're a mamish in the depths of hell. You were shooting heroin day and night and your life was over. You lost everything, 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 and you caused everyone to hate you, right? And then Hashem comes and intervenes in your life, mamish, in such an intimate way, such a personal way, pulls you out of there and gets you, fills your life with meaning, holiness, beauty, and love. Do you then say, you know, I really appreciate what you did for me. It's, it's already appreciation. Somebody's talking now about, about our ability to get to that love by appreciating what he's done for us. Nachon, but you the don't get stuck on appreciation. About, the first love he was talking about was the love that Sadiq made. Right. And the second love, everything he was talking about, Darach Cloud and Darach Prad, are the ways that we can appreciate Hashem by what he's done for us. That's what he's been talking about. The last Absolutely, but, but the point here is to say that it's not, then uh, uh, the, you kind of like jump over the shlav of appreciation. Meaning, of course you appreciate, but you don't get stuck on, I really appreciate. It's more just a sense of absolute love. You're just in awe of this feeling, which brings you to a place of ahava. He hasn't used the word appreciation, really. He's just going through examples of things that maybe would lead us to Reasons appreciation. To right. right. But he hasn't even gotten there yet. Not even right. He brings you to a gedula yidbarach she'en lakitz v'tachlis, azai kamayim hapanim el hapanim, so he quotes here a pasuk, I think it's from Mishnah. Then like the reflective, you know, when you look into a, into a water, you see a reflection. It's almost like then, so too, your mom is looking at a Kodesh Baruch Hu. You're spending your time looking at the Ribbon Shleim. It's mom in front of you, what life itself is. What happens at that moment? Tis orer ha'ahava belev kol maskil, this love, this amazing place of truly, truly, not just appreciating, but actually loving that, which I realize means the absolute world to me, will be aroused, believe in that. Now look at the words he chooses here. I love this. Believe kol maskil. Instead, he could have said, or world would have said, should have said the what? Or, bemoyach kol maskil, or, or the other way, which we believe, call margish, right? What does he say here? It says, this is Mamish Lubavitch. Okay, absolutely. This is Chabad, okay? These three words are Mamish, what, this, you want to understand what Chabad is all about? This is it. Believe, call maskil, into the heart of each, what's maskil? A discerning person. A discerning, a, the thinking, breathing organism of your existence through the heart of it it's basically saying that which he br brought you to such a place of, of think this is all a thought process what he did sorry so the, uh, the avodas of the machshava on an action level is felt in the heart the hardest, thing, hardest thing and that's why the, you know the, that's why a lot of people refer to chabad as like the lit vishachasidus because they're working from a different, it's mamish working from a different place. Believe, call maskil. These words are wondrous. Conscious follows consciousness. Believe, call maskil. Um is born in Bezeh, and he contemplates this beumka deliba in the depths of his heart. Leelves Hashem ahava aza. To love Hashem ahava aza is like a fiery, burning love. Ule davkabo. Believe, venefesh. And to cling to him in the heart and in the soul, like it will be explained in its place. Now, again, Yitba'er in Hebrew means will be explained. But like many of the times here when the Altar Rebbe says Yitba'er, it really was already Mavu'ar in the previous section of the Tanya, which was supposed to be after this piece of Shayich and Vehemuna. But that's why it's okay to learn this first. It's actually recommended sometimes. Because when we then will learn the Tanya inside, the first piece will understand much clearer what he's talking about when he speaks about this contemplation of these inyanim over here right now. All right, so this, he says, this second level of Ahava 
It makes sense now how love can be commanded. He's not saying, I command you to feel. What is he basically saying? I command you to contemplate all that which will activate the love. All right? That's very, very, very important. And this second type of love is our love. It's you and I. That's what we have shaykhs to. We'll, con we'll continue tomorrow. Bezat Hashem. Shkoyach.